finances in your new company are another matter that is worth mentioning but can't be fully described here, for several reasons. Firstly, the issue is too complex. There are lots of books about it. Secondly, there are big differences between the countries and what is relevant in UK might be different in Poland. We will try to give you some general hints, if you are interested, you can find more specific information. Let's start with the most difficult one. If you don't have a regular full-time job at the same time you start your own business you need to be prepared for a few months that will not generate any income. Or will cost you a lot, sometimes there are a lot of investments to make. You should have the money that would allow you to survive for at least 3-6 months without an income. Otherwise you will be stressed, overtired and willing to make compromises you didn't want to make. To partly solve the previous problem you can look for extra funding for young entrepreneurs in many EU project or in local government initiatives. Also most of the countries have places with preferable development conditions for startups and new companies. Look around. Here is one of the most important pieces of advice, even if your form of business activity allows you to keep your private and company's money together. It is strongly advised not to do that. To manage the monthly budget of the firm and your personal one you should have two separate bank accounts and pay yourself a salary every month. It will prevent you from being confused and ending up with mess on your account. Let's talk about savings. Again. We can't stress enough how important this part is. In your private life you should have savings to make you feel safe and prepared for unexpected circumstances. The same rule will be useful for your company, you will never know how many clients you will have next month or what will you have to repair or buy. It's good to be prepared. This scheme shows what the division of each in Tepaini's finances should look like. There is a special place for your taxes in it. The common practice is having two sub-accounts on your company's bank account, one for VAT and other for income tax. Put the money on these accounts every time you earn something, don't feel attached to it and don't touch it. In this case you won't have to nervously look for savings in times of monthly or quarterly tax reports. Taxes, as well as savings, merit a special consideration. As an entrepreneur you are probably able to include some relevant purchases in the expenses of your business. Think about what forms of business activity are the most profitable in your case. What kinds of contracts you should use. Or maybe you should start doing your annual tax reports with your spouse. Do you have kids? Are you involved in charity actions? All these and many other factors might help you optimize the amount of the taxes you pay. Remember, we are not talking about illegal or morally ambiguous actions, which are more similar to stealing than optimizing. We mean all of the legal and commonly used practices that our law allows us to use. This is important especially at the beginning of your business, you will have hard time making profit anyway. Do some research, make an effort and save money. Of course not everyone is good at maths. This leads us to some more advice. Find good specialists. Using the services of an accountant is not a big expense nowadays. There are many internet accounting offices that offer good quality for a decent price. When it's hard to find a really good one, ask around. Do you have any friends or family members that are entrepreneurs? Ask them. Recommendations are the best way to find a good specialist. If your income increases, you might think about consulting your tax optimization with a tax advisor. This is the same rule as before, ask for a good one. Don't expect them to be cheap. Good professional will cost you, but they will also contribute to your financial well-being.